giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, to the So We T Region Recap for Week One. My name is Kristen. I'm Griffin, and I'm Marshall. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the action we saw this weekend in Georgia, Palmetto, and Chesapeake, and give you a sneak pre sneak peek preview into Week Two. Uh, first and foremost, before we dive into our region recaps, we actually want to send uh, all of our thoughts out to any of the Georgia teams that were affected by the tornadoes that went through yesterday. Um, we hope all of y'all are safe, and that those of y'all that traveled this weekend are safe and sound and Let's hope John's power comes back soon. So before Mother Nature decided to wreak havoc across the Southeast, we saw some fierce competition at Gainesville. We had not one, not two, but three fun hosts at Gainesville this weekend, uh, including myself. We had John and Connor came and visited from New from the New England district with 166. We had zero unicorn matches and only two complete rockets for the entire event. Um, one each from 1102 Make and Magic and 1747 Harrison Boiler. Uh, both of those were in the quals. There were a surprisingly large number of third level HAB climb attempts than second compared to second level, which actually surprised me a little bit. And uh, zero game pieces scored in the high goals in elimination. So it looks like Karthik might have had a good point about the game made a shift for limbs versus quals. More on this later. By the end of Saturday, it looks like one of either 832 Oscar or 2655 Flying Platypie would be seated first. But some drivetrain glamblins cost 2655 their hold of the top and allowed 6919 Commodores and 1102 Making Magic to shoot up to the top. And this led to some very different alliance selections than many would have predicted the night before. 6919 quickly stole 1747 Harrison Boiler for themselves and later picked up 6705 who was later subbed out for backup team 4112 Robo Eagles. Alliance 1 didn't make it all the way fi- all the way to the finals without some struggles. They had to f- fight through tiebreakers in quarters, semis, and finals. Eventually, they won out against Alliance 3, and congratulations to 6919 Commodores, 1747 Harrison Boiler, 6705 Wildcat 5E, and 4112 Eaglebots on their win for this weekend. Congratulations to 1648G3 on their Chairman's Award, and to 6919 Commodores for their engineering engineering inspiration for that gold-silver double-cling bling. I also sat down with 1414iHot on Sunday morning to talk to them a little bit about their robot. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Kristen with First Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 1414 iHot with Monit and Justin. Um, Justin and Monit, do y'all want to tell me a little bit about what y'all's role on the team is? Yeah, so I'm the captain, and Monit's also the captain, or co-captains. Um, I mainly focus on design and Monit programming. You focus on uh, programming most. Okay. Um, tell, me, tell me about your robot. What's kind of your favorite feature about it? Um, so I guess here... Starting off from the front, we have the cargo intake. Um, so yeah, it's just a dual roller, and it um, picks up off the floor and angles up to pick off um, from the loading station. Um, and then it's on a, a single jointed arm off of a custom gearbox with an 800 to 1 reduction, um, so we can control it easily. We also have a cascade elevator here, powered off of four 775s of um, red lines. And then we have our climber in the back that um, I guess this is 
probably one of our favorite parts of the robot. Uh, the climber is powered off the main elevator, actually. So, Mona, do you mind lifting the, uh, or lifting the elevator? Um, so, if we lift the elevator. Um, after we're in this position, we drop these hooks down mm -hmm. on the climber, and we lower the elevator. And then it engages the hooks down here. And that way, once we lower the elevator even more, and lower the arm onto the platform, we can climb and then just drive on. Awesome. Um, I guess one part, another part of the robot is the hatch intake, which is kind of, uh, it was working, but we're in the process of fixing it. Basically, we have two pistons in the, in the tube here, and it just, um, on linear bearings, uh, pops in and out. The mechanism's here. It just goes into the hatch panel and it opens up. Um, but yeah, we're fixing that right now. Awesome. All right, and then... On the programming side, yeah. So we basically have a limelight camera on the front of our robot. That's mostly used for lining up or aligning the angle of our robot with the reflective tape. We use the dual target mode, which is really helpful in this game because um, then you can see the difference between different hatches. Um, for the drivetrain, since we use NEOs, uh, it's pretty easy to use, use the encoders in there and then set up PIDs. But for the elevator and arm, we use the 775 Pros and the Talon SRXs and Victors. So from that, we can basically use run motion magic with an S profile or S curve. And that allows us to create a velocity and acceleration graph and then kind of smooth out the, the edges of that with the jerk values. And that lets us, do, the drivers use different set points. And for example, if we need to go to the hatch, it's consistent. We go to the same level every time just by the click of a button rather than manual percent output. So awesome. yeah, that's pretty helpful. And then do you guys want to tell me a little about some of the outreach that y'all do outside of the outside of uh, robots or, or fun stuff that y'all do as a team? Yeah, so I think we've grown a lot as a team, like technically. Um, so if you look at our 2016 robot, it's kind of funny actually. Um, so uh, actually, Mana and I have done like some workshops with um, Robo Jackets, um, which is like the I guess the robotics organization at Georgia Tech, and we've been kind of trying to like introduce like more technical sides of first into Georgia, because as a district we're still kind of growing. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we've done like introduction to control systems or introduction to like custom gearbox design because. I feel like that's something, while not every team needs to do, is something that some teams should look into. Awesome. And also, we kind of, um, we're kind of trying to grow a lot in our school itself. We go to an international school. We're trying to bring up the STEM there a lot. So we have an FLL team for middle schoolers, and we're kind of also growing ourselves. We had about 11 people in 2017, 17 people in 2018, and 45 people this year. Whoa, 45. So it's, like, it's a huge growth, and it's all high school students out of 200 people or 300 people in our entire high school. Awesome. 45 are on the device team. So it's Fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, you guys are ranked pretty high already. So best of luck with the rest of your matches today. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you on the field. Thank you so much, Team fourteen fourteen IHOP, for sitting down with us on Sunday morning. And uh, I'm going to kick it off to Marshall to talk about Palmetto. Happy. Thanks, Kristen. So uh, 64 teams this past weekend descended on Myrtle Beach for the Palmetto Regional, and it was an impressive sight as always. So lots of teams from South Carolina, Florida, New York, Ohio, Tennessee, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Alabama, Illinois, and North Carolina. We saw a lot of truly awesome stuff at the event. I want to give a quick call out to Marsh for their amazing swerve drive. Uh, they spent the first part of the event working out some kinks with it, but by the end, the driver was really letting it fly. Uh, it's a very impressive system. So jumping right into it, first off, uh, Team 1293, the Pandamaniacs from Columbia, South Carolina, put in their first ever appearance as an Alliance captain. Uh, they lost out in the quarterfinals to an Alliance captain by 1051, the Technical Terminators from Mullins, South Carolina. That Alliance also had on it the chairman's winning team, and you could say these folks really brought home the bacon. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Team 1902 Exploding Bacon from Orlando, Florida. The Alliance lost out. I feel like the joke just makes itself. Um, the Alliance lost out in the semifinals, though, to the runner-up Alliance captain by Team 379, the RoboCats from Gerard, Ohio. Uh, they also brought home the uh, Engineering Inspiration Award. And the finals were a serious treat to watch from the stands with some serious defense being played by Team 3824 HVA Rohoptics from Knoxville, Tennessee, 
who happened to pick up a wild card at the event. HVA was all over Robots Garage, Team 4451 from Warren, South Carolina. Uh, sadly, that defense wasn't enough, and it all came down to the climbing at the end of Finals 1 with the number one seeded alliance, captained by Team 4020. Cyber Tribe from Kingsport, Tennessee, taking the win. Finals Round 2 took a turn when the third seeded alliance pulled out an upset at the buzzer. Um, and then finally, it came down to that third round, and out, out of the gate, uh, the number one alliance proceeded to take the lead in the Sandstorm period and managed to keep it up until about halfway through the match with the Blue Alliance catching up quickly. The match was tied at the start of the end game, and ultimately, when the scores finally showed, it came down to a 16-point penalty given to uh, the Blue Alliance, uh, or sorry, the Red Alliance, uh, giving the Red Alliance the win with a final score of 83-73. to 73. Uh, and now uh, off to uh, Griffin to cover the events from Chesapeake. All right. Thank you, Marshall. All right. So 37 teams came to Deep Run High, hoping to test out their brand new robots. Then there were many DCs, a few field faults, and two instances of magic smoke. The qualification matches went smoothly. At the end of the matches, sitting at the number one spot was the perennial powerhouses, 346 Robohawks. They picked up their old friends 1262 the Stags and rounded out the alliance with 539 Titans. They swiftly went through the quarterfinals, however, contracting a yellow card when 539 interfered with the opponent's half during endgame by accident. They were subbed out for CC882 Fahrenheit Robotics and easily took the semis against the number four seed. In the finals, it was deja vu from last year as 346 and 1262 played on the field with 384 and 1610 all of which were in the finals of Richmond 2018 with different with a few different team-ups. In the end, 384, 1610, and 3359 were unable to counter the pure strength of the RoboStags alliance, thus leading to another victory for the RoboHawks, adding another event to their district event win streak. Congratulations to 422 MechTech Dragons on their engineering inspiration, 7429 Convergence on Rookie All-Star, and 1086 Blue Cheese on Chairman's. Breakout stars of the events include 2998 Robo Vikings, 977 Common Bots, and 1908 The Shore Bots. So going a little bit north, it was there there was the Haymarket event, which was just running at the exact same level of competitiveness. However, the last six matches of qualifications were skipped due to the possibility of heavy snow coming in later that night. After all 38 teams competed in 70 qualification matches, uh, at the top was six what six twelve chantilly robotics thanks in part to their very consistent climb they picked up the favorites of the district 2363 triple helix and a surprising final pick of 1731 festa valley robotics they had a tough road where they had to go to every round to its tiebreaker but eventually made it to the finals to face the number two seed of 614 19 hawks and the undisputed uh, the undisputed best bot of the competition, 1418 Bay Victus, and 6543 Puma Tech. The number two alliance went on to win match one, but the number one alliance bounced back and won both match two and three by a difference of one point in each round. Congrats to 2363 Triple Helix on EI for that silver gold clean bling, and to 1629 Garrett Collision on their chairman's win. Breakout stars of the event include 2028, Phantom Mentalist, 4099, The Falcons, and 1719, Umbrella Corporation. It's time to order some donuts of debate from the Chat Cafe on Conversation Street. Can you tell that we watch Grand Tour? <laughs> Today's conversation uh, is going to be high scoring versus low scoring. And by high scoring, I mean um, either opting for a level three hab climb or uh, I guess in most cases scoring on the mid and high levels of the rocket. Um, there were a couple different instances where one was better than the other and I was actually shocked to see how often low scoring actually decided a lot of quals matches as opposed to um, finals matches. Uh, yeah. Did you guys kind of see a similar thing at y'all's event regarding climbing or, or rocket scoring? Yeah. I feel, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Griffin. I feel like for uh, my event during the qualification matches, it was all about scoring in the car, scoring cargo in the low. There are very few teams that could really 
to hatch as well uh, at higher levels. So they put so they put null hatches. They would often put null hatches on the cargo ship and then fill up the cargo with that. Now there were now very few teams went for the high because of course that takes a lot more time. And but what often teams ran into is if they were fast enough in the cargo ship, they ran out of options for um, putting cargo somewhere. Even and though that was rare in qualifications, that was abundant more in eliminations. So I think what teams had to realize was that in order to like get the optimization, you have to have someone who is able to do the hatches on the rocket. So that way you get more options for your cargo players. Yeah, I think that kind of matches up with what we saw in Palmetto. Um, definitely, it, there was this dynamic between high and low that was playing out for a lot of the matches. So, I, I'm not sure which is better yet. Uh, I suspect it's going to be pretty obvious as we get later into the, the, the season here, but, but uh, there's definitely a dynamic at play there. So. so, we can also talk a little bit about the the frequency of level three hab climbs versus level two. Uh, I know two of the events this weekend out of our region, um, we saw way more level three climbs, attempts, and successes as opposed to level two. Gainesville was definitely one of them. Um, I actually think 2655 was one of the very few with uh, that was doing level two pretty much every time. Um, and then I think there was one other event out of our region that kind of had the same story now a couple of the chesapeake one of the chesapeake events had kind of the exact opposite where there was a lot more level two climbing as opposed to level three um so i don't know if you guys have any comments on what y'all think might have influenced that is it team experience is it just a difference in the meta of, of each region or what do you guys think i think right now it's probably a, a kind of it's a little bit of both i mean and there's probably some other factors that are thrown into it as well but i definitely think a lot more teams right now are aiming for that level three climb and trying to get it dialed in particularly early events if you're attending multiple events that's kind of what you're working on right now um so i suspect we're going to see more of that um and then as things progress maybe we'll see a uh, dynamic shift as we see some of the teams kind of abandon that strategy if it's not working for them and move on to a level two climb. But I don't know. So kind of tough to call. I feel like it's just for the simple fact that a lot of teams that are in, at least for my district, saw the level two climb or the level two climb as insignificant if you can get the level three because yeah. the level three or level three is twice as much as level two. And get get one park, and you automatically have a Definitely. ranking point. Definitely more than twice as hard, though. Yes, but uh, often, like <laughs> people people in people up in, up in Chesapeake uh, thought that or made designs with that sort of a, I forget what it's called, like rack and pinion, rack and pinion. Yeah. So that way, it has a variable height level to where if they need to, they can also go on level two. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So I, let's. Oh, go. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. We'll keep, oh, we'll I keep. was going to launch into, uh, well, let's launch into the FRC top 10 out of the CUET region. Uh, there were actually a couple surprises, uh, even for me. Uh, ranked number one out of our region was 346 Robo Hawks, 4451 Robots Garage, 1102 Making Magic, 2655 The Flying Platypie, 1293 Pandamaniacs, 1902 Exploding Bacon, 6919 Commodores, 86 Team Resistance, 614 Nighthawks, and 612 Chantilly Robotics. I am shocked I don't see IHOT up here, to be honest, considering they did quite well at Georgia, at least I thought they did, aside from some of their less than stellar swan dives from the third level. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I am in no way surprised to see Robots Garage up there. I saw that robot in person, saw it perform in Palmetto. That is an impressive robot. So those students and mentors have something to truly be proud of. Yeah, and I'm not at all surprised at Rebel Hawks. Like that robot was extremely dominant. Like the fact that they could make that level three climb in less than five seconds 
like even or even heck less than two seconds they would just need to drive up and flip and they immediately have it i think like it was a little bit shaky at the beginning because it was untested and also i heard from them that they had broken a few gearboxes on their first two few climbs but uh once they got gearbox once they got through all that and figured out okay how should we how can we not break our gearboxes then i think everything just went right for them all right um i'm gonna pass it off to griffin for this week's meme of the week out of our region <laughs> there are a couple <laughs> i feel like this, this is something we've got to talk about <laughs> all right so all right so for this for this region uh or for the meme of the week uh first off i want to give a quick shout out to 612 doing the macarena during the time in which they were playing Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> but I have to say the meme of the week, it goes to just 619. Uh, 619 uh, had three instances where they were could be considered a meme. First off, in qualification matches, they were with 4286, and they actually went up a ramp. And that was the, one of the first times someone actually went up a ramp in our district. Then the second time, during uh, during Alliance selection, uh, they were offered a place with 422 Mechtech Dragons. Their response? Um, no. Would you like to join their alliance? Um, no. Hey, that's perfectly normal. They have the right to accept. Yeah, and then the last part is during el eliminations, it turns out we've come to find out that they did not mean to say no. In fact, that was miscommunication on their part with uh, their pr field representative. And so during quarterfinals, they were up against the number one seed of Robo Stags. And they put on their robot and flipped up their arm at the end and it said, sorry, 422. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the best thing I've ever seen done. I I think this is this is great because it emphasizes that communication is genuinely very important. <laughs> yeah, the, this this rivals um, 3459 last year's putting on the bottom of their robot saying, "If if you see this, please help." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up uh, this week. We'll do a quick uh, preview of the next few events. Um, I guess top teams that you want to watch. Go. Three, two, one. All right. All right. Bethesda. Teams you want to look out for. 1885, 686, 449, 1111, and 2537. My prediction for a sleeper, 7770. I'll be headed up to Wake County this weekend refereeing, and you definitely want to keep an eye out for 5190, 6502, 4561, and 2642. And I think that team mentored by some random dude named Marshall. I think he's a mentor or something. Who's Marshall? <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> Who's Marshall? He's like a mentor or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for who came to watch and, and hang out with us tonight. Uh, if you want more first robotics in your life and the like, and all we do, all we ask that you do is let others know about the fun show. Uh, tell them to come to subscribe. Uh, give us a like. And uh, on behalf of myself, Griffin, and Marshall, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. And thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is In Femination, first in Michigan. And we'll talk to you next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. Bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.